Coming to you live from the North Pole, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who's in the Christmas spirit, finally, I am Rob's sister, Nina, hello everybody, and welcome back, and ho, ho, holy moly, is Reindeer Games good? In the words of Cam, I'm not surprised, but I am juiced up. Yeah, let's get juiced up. For Reindeer Games, and here with our panel tonight, back with us, ready to talk about everything. Here he is, Taryn Armstrong. Taryn, how are you? Happy I'm holidays. Great. Yes. Uh, so we have an actual episode to talk about. Uh, so great getting to see all of these uh, these Big Brother players who are just like already crushing it in the diary room for content like uh you know in terms of a like on a scale of one to ten from like how bad this could be this is like this is up there like uh we've hit the up upper number good. yeah uh like the, the, there's strategy there's a social game uh and we've given these players space to be super entertaining which is exactly what they are um, and I think we're in for a, a, a holiday treat here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Holiday treat. You heard it here first from Taryn Armstrong. They're going to have that in the commercial for the next episode. Also, she didn't believe. <laughs> but here we are. A Christmas miracle. It's Melissa Denny. I am here to eat some humble Christmas pie and wear my best Christmas sweater and enjoy my beautiful decor. I'm a Christmas because... card calling in tonight. Wow. What a show. I absolutely loved it. I texted my mom midway through saying, oh my God, Reindeer Games is actually really good. You need to watch it because she was like, I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I loved it. It had everything I needed out of a Big Brother show. I mean, obviously, live feeds aren't there, but they aren't on the show anyway. So, I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, first challenge is a mental comp. We have all these players coming in. I was grinning from ear to ear watching all their intros and having them see each other. It was phenomenal. I absolutely will be watching the rest. All right. Rave reviews for the Reindeer Games. Are you juiced up? Oh, I am beyond juiced. Juiced up. All right. <laughs> I'm here with us. Okay. I'm always like, I podcast too much with Mike Bloom. So I'm always nervous to unwrap a person with the camera off. It's Puya Zambakili. Puya, are you there? Hello. Oh, Puya Claus. <laughs> it's Santa. Oh That's God. right. I'm, I'm uh, Santa's younger, more tanned brother, Tanta. Happy mm -hmm. to be here. <laughs> yes. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped, y'all. This was fun. What a yeah. fun night. Juiced up? Juiced all the Juiced way up, up. Rob. No <laughs> yeah. more laughs. All right. Here we go. It's Reindeer Games, of course. Two-hour premiere of Reindeer Games. I would say an hour and 45 minutes. I was way into Reindeer Games. Kind of felt like the last... It could have been a 90-minute episode. Well, <laughs> uh, I felt like Santa's last stand uh, went on a, a bit. Well, that's the thing. The last part of the episode is what I think a lot of people worried the show was going to be and we're not here for. Every other part of it that we liked was the stuff we didn't expect to see, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm shocked that there was any sort of strategy. I think, like, what really got me is the initial descriptions of the show where they were like, it's all comps. It's not anything like you know of from Big Brother. Like all the strategy of Big Brother is like is not involved in this. And that was like all like the hype up. And I was like, that's not getting me hyped. Like I want to see the strategy. So when we did the draft the other day, I was like, okay, there's not going to be any strategy. As much as we kept being like, there's going to be strategy. There's going to be strategy. Hopefully. Yeah. I was like, no way. And there was. And it was the best. Yeah. Taryn, I was not expecting so much time in the house. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the way they I, the way they pitched this show, I think, was not good, not great, not great. Right. Uh, because like, it, not only did it not appeal to like the likes of us, um, but I also like I have seen a similar sentiment among the more casual audience, Melissa, of like, why would I even bother watching this? I mm -hmm. feel like they just haven't properly uh, explained how this is actually good. Um, and the pitch of like, hey, it's all comps and it's uh, like it's Christmas and it's BB Legends uh, is just like, eh, I don't feel like I need that. 
But if you pitch this as like, hey, it's BB Legends, Brittany, Danielle Reyes, Taylor, Xavier, Co like all these people are here and they're having space to to be them themselves and like interact and compete and betray each other and uh there's social game there's drama there's strategy um all of a sudden it's like oh hold on this is oh hold on uh, <laughs> i i this this is my holiday treat like i i'm i'm down for this why wasn't this what the pitch was right i it's think so much better but this is way better that it went this way, y'all. It's way better that a lot of people came in with floor expectations, really thinking, oh, this isn't going to be anything good. Because now look at us. Look at the energy that we got tonight, like throughout the entire Internet. This was a lot better than anyone expected. Even if you were looking forward to this, it's a lot better than you expected it to be. And I think it's perfect. I think the biggest key for me was seeing some of these alum today who are on the show hyping it up. I was like, you wouldn't hype it up if it was going to be bad because you know people are going to be big mad about it. So yeah. they hyped it up. They're saying it's going to get even better. It's going to be a, a show and a half. So I'm here for it. I'm excited. Yeah. I wonder if this is kind of like a BBOTT where maybe they farmed out some of the competitions to like the B team and it's not the usual people that are doing the stuff that's during the Big Brother proper season. Uh, Taryn, uh, do you buy that theory? I mean, it's possible uh, that first comp was basically like the coup d'etat thing that they mm -hmm. did uh, in All Stars. Um, and then also like um, in Big Brother 4, like the Big Apple thing. Um, so it's it had been done before. Uh, and then the second comp was kind of pretty similar to what we would see. It, but it felt more old school because mm -hmm. there was a lot more social component to it. Mm -hmm. And then the final piece. Uh, the final comp uh, being such a complicated puzzle was definitely new for them. Felt very survivor to me. Um, so it it definitely feels like they have uh, a, a a different perspective or like take on what they want the challenges to be for this competition or uh, for this show. Um, and so I don't know if that necessarily means different people, but it feels like similar, but definitely with a different uh, angle on it. Okay, so I really liked these competitions. I felt like there was an even distribution of like fairness, really. Like, you know, they were very different from each other. And you didn't necessarily have to be just like a comp beast in order to win them. And also, even when it was a very physical comp competition with like the balance beam and everything for the second one, there was still the element of like, okay, put your envelope in someone else's thing, which gave strategy. And I just felt like it made it way more interesting for someone like me to watch because then you're watching the people putting the envelopes into certain people's mail slots and then other people reacting to that versus just like, okay, this person's running and going very fast. Like to, for me, that doesn't do it for me, but this was way better. Okay, so if you're just listening to the podcast, you didn't watch the episode, rave reviews for Reindeer Games so far. Also, <laughs> uh, somebody's going home at the end of every Reindeer Games episode as opposed to waiting one week to send somebody home. And tonight, we saw the first person evicted from the Reindeer Games house, and it was Cam, who really, it just seemed like, was a case of the fresh meat where mm -hmm. the alumni, mm -hmm. they all knew each other. They felt like, okay, well, none of the other alumni are going to be mad at me if we just pile on Cam. And ultimately, he just becomes an easy target here in the Reindeer Games house. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what, what's interesting about Cam is that he theoretically was kind of like the only person who was announced to be on the cast. I mean, when, when Julie announces Reindeer Games and then says somebody from this season was is is going to be on reindeer games um i immediately knew it was cam i think most people immediately knew it was cam which means you know there was actually some time for people to theoretically reach out to cam talk to him in the pregame um you know maybe even interview him on podcasts uh and so like you know there definitely was opportunity there and it's a little surprising that nothing managed seems to manage to like stick or lock in in any way um because if if anything he's the person who had the most amount of like exposure and yep. therefore the most amount of opportunity to have those conversations but maybe he was reluctant to i'm not sure 
Now, I didn't clock anything that I seemed like he did especially wrong in this episode, but did did he need to just really like throw himself at like uh, somebody of like, hey, use me? Like, I, I seem like that he was trying to like float a little bit here that maybe they just won't notice me here in this house of legends. Yeah. And I think the tough part with that is that everybody else kind of knows each other or at least knows more about each other than they do cam um and i feel like instead of just like kind of blending into the background and people not noticing him instead it just put a tar an easy target on him because now it's like okay well I, I have some sort of relationship with at least everyone else in the house except for cam so he's the one person that i don't have any connection with and that it won't really matter if he leaves or not and mm -hmm. i feel like that's that's was really his biggest downfall but it really wasn't his own fault it just that's the way it went yeah i mean i have to imagine that reputation plays a role here as well yeah. um 100%. like if you just watched bb25 you just watched him play the game that he did where like he was not the most reliable ally and he was the person who was making the pitch of like use me in the game i'm all on i'm all on my own um when you know then he was like revealing all your secrets when he got in mm -hmm. trouble and so like if you watched that season and you're hearing the same pitch you just heard him give on the show you're probably like eh, i think i'm good actually like i don't know if i need this i think that i think we are 100 on point the reputation plays a part and then i also think his inaction rather than action on trying to form connections or get to know people granted again it's a very small time span but I would argue that if you saw some other people maybe from this past season, they would have fared better here than he did ultimately. But again, the big thing being the reputation of being good at the challenges and also being an unreliable alliance mate do put him in a little mm -hmm. bad here. Yeah. Yeah. I can't then, help but think of like if Heisen was there instead, because that was the other name that like people I think were considering. Uh, it does feel to me like there it might have ended. It might have had a different result. Yeah, but Heisem is a, more about like building a group where I think that Cam, that I think he sort of like gravitates a little bit more towards being a loner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Or maybe like working with just like a couple of people, whereas like he's not really, that's not his game to be part of like a big alliance. Yeah, yeah no, that, I, I agree. Yeah. It did seem like people were already kind of grouping up and it just did. I mean, we didn't see Cam in that segment at all when people were grouping up. So, I mean, it just makes it clear that he probably didn't try and do that. Just thinking like this, is, I'm going to play the game on my own or whatever. This is about competitions anyway. And maybe I'll win one and be able to like, people might want to work with me because I'm winning. But in this situation, it just didn't happen. And then how about this from Frankie Grande? Uh, this was uh, completely savage. I think you're the first person to be evicted three times in two months. <laughs> Frankie Grande. <laughs> Is that the Christmas spirit? Yikes. Poor Cam. Frankie, come on. <laughs> come on. Um, yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, wasn't Victor evicted? How many times was Victor evicted? Uh, three times, right? Three, yeah, because he battled back yeah. twice. So three times in, what was that, three months maybe, yeah. technically, I guess? Yeah. So mm, come on. Maybe. Come on, Frankie. Mm. Not the first time. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about this cast here and go through uh, our friends that we uh, got to see return to the Big Brother house, uh, just in the order that they appeared. And here is Taylor, great person to uh, get things started. And uh, really, really fun how everybody did the introductions. And Taylor is here and ready to go in Reindeer Games. Yeah. At first I was like, Oh, she picked an interesting outfit. And then I realized that every single one of them was put in like a very, very Christmassy outfit. So I was like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. But at first I was like, huh, she's very festive. But uh, I just loved Taylor coming in. I was, uh, I just loved it. She's just so great to watch. She's so much fun to watch. I mean, basically everybody in the cast is really fun to watch. Um, so I, I, yeah, the cast is excellent. Yeah. You know how great it feels to be able to watch Taylor in the Big Brother house and there's not this like animosity on her from <laughs> night one? Yes. It, feels, it looks glorious. I love the sight of this. This has been great. Yeah. Taylor's here and uh, she's here to play. Play. Mm -hmm. uh, she's here to play hard in Reindeer Games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she came in hot 
uh like uh she's sort of like um she has an idea that, that of what she wants right she wants to use xavier as a weapon um she wants to make sure that cody who is probably the most dangerous player there uh has a target on his back um now you know is it is it maybe a little too hot uh <laughs> we'll have to wait and see okay uh in second here comes Cody, Cody Calafiore is here, winner of uh, Big Brother All-Stars. Uh, cites that he has been in Christmas movies. Shout out to the B&B &B, uh, who has watched all of them uh, to, to a catalog on the podcast. And so uh, here comes Cody. Yes. It was, it's funny because I feel like I'm so used to seeing him in the Big Brother house that I wasn't like, oh my God, he's in the house. Yeah. I was like, yeah, he's in the house. I've seen him there a million times. That's where he should be. Okay. Uh, now here comes Brittany. And Brittany really had a big episode here after she wins the first uh, competition. Then we spend like 20, 30 minutes on like uh, her like advantage, uh, disadvantage decision seemingly and having all the meetings, which really ultimately matters that she gave one person a letter no yeah it didn't matter at all if no it wasn't Taylor, i mean if it wasn't Brittany who won it they absolutely would not have spent that much time exactly or, like, yeah, yada, yada, like, it. yeah i feel like it's like because it's Brittany and she has such great so commentary. good like and each of her meetings were so good i mean her meeting about with frankie about x and how she was like well he didn't win and frankie's like x did win that was hilarious like She's just so good and she makes everything entertaining. I feel like she carried a lot of the episode on her back and I'm all for it because having her in the DR, it, uh, it, she's just so good. She's so entertaining. She can make anything entertaining. Yeah. Uh, so fun to have Brittany here. Um, here comes Xavier. We got to see uh, Xavier is engaged or Xavier is married now. Engaged. I think. Engaged. Okay. So congrats to Xavier. He's back uh, and uh, ready to win a competition here to save uh, his hide here by uh, the end of the episode. Listen, he's going to be getting in an alliance. Yes, I enjoy Xavier. Y'all know this. He gave me my first draft win as well. So I have a special place sure. in my heart for Xavier. Did anyone else feel like Xavier was giving zero energy at the start of the night in his intro? I was like, Xavier, are they making you be there, man? Like, yeah, you know, I, I personally, I like Xavier the person more than Xavier the TV character. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that probably of the eight people left that are in the, the show, like maybe it's between him and Cody for who's going to give us the driest uh, confessionals. <laughs> Once in a while, like Xavier really like knocks one out of the park and he has like a very like subtle sense of humor. But overall, like he's not usually like big energy in the diary room. To be fair, Cody gave us that great Nicole impression. Mm -hmm. So he gave us that. So I don't know if Xavier gave us that or really much of anything in the DR this episode, but you know what? Maybe he will. Maybe he will. Uh, so we'll, we'll hold out hope, but you know, Xavier can be funny, but I feel like in big brother 23, at least his game was to be intentionally boring a lot mm -hmm. of times. So maybe like he'll bring like a little bit more fire to the reindeer games. But yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, like, uh, this is really the first time ever that Xavier has had his back against the wall, at least in a big brother game. I think the challenge was somewhat similar, but like, um, you know, like what, what, does Xavier do when when pressed uh, now that he has been put in this situation? He's won his way back in. Like, uh, does he does he have some fire in him to really like uh, mm -hmm. push push the envelope? Yeah. Okay, to be fair, the chat is pointing out that he did do the bald head ponytail thing, which was, that was pretty good. Hilarious. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, he can be funny, Xavier. He will have give us like, a, you know, he had like the moment where when he sauntered into the living room when he had to vote on the live show when he was wearing the uh, oh, yeah. the the Aza wig. Uh, so like he'll give us like some funny moments uh, here and there. But although he didn't know. do a great job in his conversation with Brittany, I feel like she very much called him out on the fact that he, he said was he was like, giving yep, air. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, I was waiting for Xavier to roast some of these people. I was not expecting Xavier to be the first one. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but the, the, it was such a good roast, too, because she didn't even really mean to. <laughs> okay. Danielle Reyes is here. Uh, 
This is so fun. This is so great. Mother is here. Danielle Reyes. So wild. So wild to see her back on our TV screens. I absolutely love it. One of my all-time favorites of reality TV. She's back. My only complaint was after Cam went home, we didn't get a one down, Mm. seven to go. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Come on, producers. It was right there. No yeah, one does like, this like understated deviousness. Yes. Like Danielle. It's she's so calm when she delivers so the line good. of like like one down, like five down. Um, and like the way like she sounds so calming and like uh like she's not like she's not doing anything devious, but her words are so devious. When she was in the DR after like they were trying to form that alliance, and she was like, Yeah, I'm not. I'm in it for me and I'm not going to just like play for other people. I was like, Oh, it's so good. I just love that sort of player. It's like, ah, it's just so good. Yeah. Now, Suri did not win big brother 25, but we did Puya get to see the Suri win in January in the traders. If we could bookend this year with a Danielle Reyes reindeer games win, it is. It's a reality TV fans fantasy. Like if 2023 started, you tell me that Suri and Danielle Reyes are winning shows. I'd say, yeah. listen, sign me up, but I don't see it happening. That would be incredible. And honestly, I'm so happy we have the reindeer games primary for many reasons at this point. The main one being getting to see some of our favorites, some of these legends Mm-hmm. doing drs and being actively in something that is very much not a 100 day commitment 70 day commitment and they can give all of that energy to the what six days that they're there it's perfect yeah. i'm so glad okay all i want for christmas is a danielle reyes win okay what a big ask all right let's talk about nicole franzel oh sorry, sorry, sorry no i'm sorry frankie grande came in next mm-hmm. I- i'm loving frankie grande too i'm loving frankie grande I got to say, yeah, it's, it's great. And this I feel the perfect like show for him. It is. And I feel like he's playing really well too. And I think I, I want to say though, that like, it was not great when Taylor was pitching Cody to Frankie. Cause I was like, can't you see they're like BFFs or sorry, they're brothers. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Frankie was great. I feel like I like the strategy. I feel like he immediately started talking strategy to Cody. Um, and that's what I want to see. I feel like, Okay, he can be a little much with, you know, his antics and everything. But obviously, I mean, this is reindeer games. He can do whatever he wants. He can prance around like a reindeer and it's great. But the strategy stuff was like very, I was very interested in that. And it felt like he just immediately jumped into like, okay, so what are we thinking here? And I just love that. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, God. That I mean, that's that that was Frankie on BB 16. Mm -hmm. Like he, Mm -hmm. he was running the show in the first week and a half. Um, and it seems like something similar might be happening here. Um, it, you know, I, it's, it felt a little bit under reported in the edit, but it, it seemed clear to me that Frankie is trying to play both sides, uh, that like he has an in with the women and he's playing mm-hmm. up the fact that he's not with Cody, like his, his whole thing of like, I don't know if it's the right w- move to take the shot at Cody yet. Um, just not yet. Uh, and it feels like, the idea of going after big targets and even when he talks to Brittany in the first bit about like hey we want to take out big targets um it does feel like he's trying to play up like hey i'm with the women uh you know i'm primarily with the women it's just that i've you know i've got cody but it, you know he's not like my main ally uh, meanwhile of course he's making cody feel like he's his main ally um and so i think that puts him in a really good place uh, as long as he's able to maintain that distance between himself and cody Yeah, I think that Frankie benefits from his personality, how extroverted he is, how high energy is. That makes a lot of people forget how strategic he can be and how conniving he can be in this game. And I feel like already we're seeing a lot of this. Or and I think again, the guy won a thing this week. I don't know if he's immediately going to be looked at next time around. I really don't. Puya, I saw you balked on Twitter when Cody said that he, that Frankie is the greatest challenge performer in Big Brother. (laughs) Was that that what he said? Best challenge performer of all time? Best competitor or something. Yeah. I thought, listen, I don't know about that. And I I said it got some response that were like, Mm -hmm. no, but it's in the conversation. I was like, listen, we can have the conversation. He's not getting top spot for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he outperformed Cody in BB16. uh, So it kind of makes sense that Cody would feel that way. 
uh, he did have the best stats of uh, of anyone coming in in terms of average uh, placement. Like uh, Frankie had beat the most amount of people that he played against um, in in his season than anyone else on this cast. So uh, he is definitely dangerous in these competitions. Yeah, and he wins one tonight. Plus yep. the idea that you know. I, th- I just really like that there's a lot of great DR people in this cast because you've got, I think Frankie's great in the DR. I think Daniel Reyes is great in the DR. I think Taylor's great in the DR. I mean, obviously, Brittany's great in the DR. Mm -hmm. I honestly think Nicole is pretty good in the DR. So I think we have like a lot of really great DR people, which really just like, I mean, because there isn't that much that you can really give in this type of show where it's like, there's no feeds. There's no real like, okay, who's HOH, who's nominating, whatever. It's like you're really getting – and there's so many challenges, and you have to be told like every time like, here's what I'm thinking during this mm-hmm. challenge or whatever. And the way that they – the fact that they are great at doing DRs means that they're able to convey that information in like an interesting, entertaining way um, when a lot of people struggle with that. And I do want to add – and I don't know what exactly the reason could be. Either it's the specific cast they put together, but I love how shady they're, they are all being towards each other in the DR. Yes. That's really adding a lot more to me. I think it's a combination of lack of scripted DRs and also just like, well, I don't need to be nice to everybody. We're going to be gone in like a week. So let me mm-hmm. just say how I feel. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's talk about Nicole Franzel. And I have to say, I'm loving Nicole Franzel here Same. in Reindeer Games. I feel like I've, I've never enjoyed Nicole Franzel more than I'm enjoying her here in the Reindeer. Now, I will say, let me just give the the pretext of there is the story going around. Uh, by, you know, Janelle had tweeted that Rachel was supposed to get the spot, whether they called Nicole or Nicole called Big Brother. And that Rachel ended up losing a spot and that Nicole ended up getting a spot. Who's to say? Rachel should be there too. If Rachel wanted to play Reindeer Games, big mistake, big brother, not that Rachel there. But Nicole, that because here's what I love about Nicole. She's so petty. <laughs> she doesn't ever forget. She will until... You know, the day she, uh, you know, hopefully very far in the future mm-hmm. for all the rest of her days, she will never forget what Cody did in Big Brother 22. <laughs> and she will stop at nothing until she gets payback. I, I think. Yeah, go ahead, Melissa. I was just going to say, I feel like she was a great add to this cast because she has like drama with everybody that. there. It's like, I mean, she had the thing with Brittany. She has the thing with Cody. It's like. Everybody is there something going on with Nicole. And I felt like, first of all, it added drama. I mean, Mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to see Nicole and Cody interact again and all that. And then also, I just feel like she really is, you know, embracing the more strategic and manipulative side, especially with some of her DRs where she was like, okay, change of plans. Now I'm going to work with BB 16 people because I can't go against them because Frankie is in charge. And I just liked how she was like, actually like owning up to the fact that she was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to fake this. I'm going to do this and that rather than just like, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I just thought it was so great. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy that she's in there. And then when she's like, duh, at the end of the VR, I was like, oh my God, it's just so funny. I love it. It's so great. And that when, you know, Cody and Frankie are trying to like, oh, like, hey, the BB-16 thing. And she's like, yeah, uh, she's going to go with it. But Taryn, she's going to, she's like Arya Stark. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and and this is this is why Nicole is a dangerous player. Because she comes in not wanting anything to do with Cody. But my my expectation was... Look at what happened with Dave Vaughn. Look at what happened with the other Nicole. Like, if she gets the opportunity, and this is why I think Brittany needs to watch out for Nicole, you can think that you've cleared the air with Nicole yeah. all you want. It never is true because she'll always keep an eye out for you, whether or not you yeah. have an eye out for her. Yeah. Um, and what I really loved about uh, how Nicole played this is that she was all out against Cody um, until it was clear that Cody had some power. And then she was the first person in there into that bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was Cody and Frankie talking, going over stuff. And she just joined them. Like, 
what's up guys like uh am i invited or not um and that's that's so huge it's something that's completely underrated in in these games of just like will, being willing to insert yourself and just going for it and being there early and and she did it yeah I think so wait, she has a what? chance to be very popular here in Reindeer Games. Because I think this is the first time that she's like in incentivized to be like a lot of times. She, I feel like she's like like trying to sabotage like the fan favorites, and mm -hmm. you know if she's really trying to like undermine Frankie and Cody here, like I do think that people could get behind her. What is the drama that Brittany and her? Such had? a good question. Because I did not know they didn't say what they were talking about at yeah. all. Yeah. Well. So I don't know the ins and outs of it, but my assumption is twofold. It all goes back to All Stars and also Janelle and Ian, who were both on that show that season and who I would assume Brittany is closer to than she is with Nicole. And Brittany got to watch from the sidelines. I may have said some stuff, but I haven't done the deep dive. This I didn't do my slop homework. So, Rob, do you have more context? No, I was going to uh, tweet out like uh, just oh, a, the amazing a, race. A, a journalistic perspective. Uh, like what just what did Brittany say about Nicole? Um, but I thought that maybe uh, some of you all might have known on the podcast. So uh, we'll see. I yeah, I was you. thinking the amazing race, but she said Big Brother 22. So I'm not sure if she had yeah. done some podcasts or something uh it wasn't here where uh she might have been uh you know talking smack about nicole when she was in the big brother 22 house yeah i, I feel like this was the first big miss of the episode for me it, like the fact that i am deeply embedded in the community and felt a bit lost uh mm -hmm. about what they were talking about means yeah. that like you know, if you are a casual watcher, like you have no idea what's happening here. Like what like, what, what is going on? Um, yeah, my assumption would be, you know, Brittany did the amazing race with Janelle. Um, and uh, I think that that was the same season that that Nicole was. on. Yeah, it was well. the, so they the all reality star season. Yes, yeah, so they were both on that that season. But like but in addition to that, it was like. Uh, there was all this stuff in BB22 about the similar rumors about like Nicole. Remember that it was like Nicole was in charge of kicking people out of the cast and uh, and Janelle clearly like really doesn't like Nicole Franzel. Um, and so, you know, I think Brittany mentioned like a tweet. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Brittany made like a snarky tweet uh, mm -hmm. supporting Janelle yeah. or something along those we'll lines. We'll do some research for tomorrow night. I feel yeah. like if I was a casual viewer or like watching this without knowing the context of it it would make nicole seem very sympathetic uh it sounded to me like without knowing details it just the way they were describing it sounded like britney was tweeting about nicole during her time on all stars and was being like very rude or something or very was saying a lot of mean stuff about it, her when they thought they were friends or when nicole thought that they were friends and so to me, that's what it seemed like. And then it definitely seemed that Brittany didn't apologize for it or anything. Just said like, yeah, I know I hurt your feelings and I know you were upset about it. And we were close at the time, but mm -hmm. didn't ever say I'm sorry or didn't ever say like I shouldn't have said X, Y, Z yeah. or whatever. So to me, if I'm a casual viewer and I'm watching this, I don't know any behind the scenes context. I would think like, oh, Brittany was just saying mean stuff about Nicole. Nicole has really heard about it and Brittany didn't apologize and she still doesn't feel bad about it. Like, that's what I would think. <laughs> This it, that, that felt very heavily edited that whole scene. Oh, for me, sure. So no, I'm not saying I think more, that's yeah. what happened. I'm just yeah. saying, like, that's as a casual viewer. If that's all I saw, that's what I would think. I feel like yeah. there's a missed opportunity from the show to just provide a screenshot or even do the edit where it's just a, a tweet that you've like edited in, but it's not the exact same word for word. In the episode as well, you know, I think it was Danielle talking about. Um, was it Daniel talking about Josh being like doing wild things on Instagram and like being jacked and stuff? I think it was like, Brittany. It was Brittany. We could have seen that footage. I feel like just show us a reel of his or a video of his. I feel like that's not a bad thing mm -hmm. to add in there. Again, yeah, very small, okay. small complaint. Right, we'll do some, complaint. like we'll continue to do uh, research. This is a very professional operation, so we will cite our sources before uh, we come back tomorrow <laughs> with that information. All right. Uh, then speaking of Josh, okay, Josh is here. He's banging pots and pans. He's ready to go, and this is fun to have Josh back too. I think it's great to have Josh back. I feel like he's way more mature than when he first was on the show. And obviously he's very seasoned now in reality TV with the challenge mm -hmm. and everything. So I think it's great to have him back on at this point in his like reality career. And so I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Okay. And then 
We also had uh, Brittany that we've mentioned, uh, or sorry, that uh, Brittany is saying she's going to go after the comp piece, and then finally the last person to come in was Cam, uh, who then is uh, coming right out of Big Brother 25. Tara, what do you think about when Brittany was talking about that Cam, she can see that Cam obviously has come out of, it's kind of a roast. She was like, he looks <laughs> haggard. He's tired. Cam. I mean, he was chilling in the jury house for a while there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah I didn't and think then, he looked that bad. I didn't think uh, he looked I actually bad. thought he looked good. I thought yeah. he looked great. Yeah. Like, uh, I thought he looked refreshed you from stuck. when I saw him last. Yeah. Uh, I think you... maybe just like the overall demeanor uh, of just like he's he's back again in this position where like socially he just can't right. find a way to fit in. And so like there's probably just like an exhaustion about that that shines through um that uh that like uh, maybe she was feeling let's talk about how everybody uh got into the reindeer games uh first of all we got to see santa is here but yeah that the big brother announcer guy is is santa no, Santa is the big brother guy who does ah. that in the off season <laughs> of Christmas <laughs> yeah so yes. that works from home, Rob. The, the North Pole, good internet. You can do all the voiceover stuff from there. It's easy. Uh, Tyrant, you buying that? Well, that was the real guy being Santa, or do you think they ADR'd it? Oh no, I mean, yeah, I think that's that's the announcer guy. Yeah. So there we, we got we got a real announcer. Would, they would bother ADR. I <laughs> thought it was work. ADR because I was like that. Well, because are we that that guy doesn't look? I mean, the announcer guy doesn't look like Santa, does he? Well, do we know what the well, announcer guy looks it's, like? It's not hard to look like him. Santa. <laughs> look, okay, like, but Bria that looks guy... like Santa right now. Yeah, I'm just missing the the beard, um, okay. which was sold separately. Yeah. <laughs> now, are we okay with uh, Santa Claus being Big Brother announcer guy who has made many like inappropriate things uh, being said in the Big Brother introductions? Like what? I mean, Rob, seeing people when they're sleeping is pretty inappropriate. Like I eating their so. food, eating their cookies. Yeah, yeah. Well, breaking Karen, and entering. Like in some ways, you're like Santa that you're just watching these house guests <laughs> all year long, and then you tell us who's been good and who's been bad, who gets a ten on the stock watch, who gets a yeah. one, who gets a fruit uh, fruit pie, and who gets a uh, jelly of the month <laughs> subscription to jelly. Is that a thing? I guess so. <laughs> jelly club right jelly club yeah you know jelly what i want to be in jelly club it sounds fun <laughs> yeah, it sounds i don't fun. know darren i don't know what, are you a big jelly consumer haven't you seen uh, those jelly advent calendars with the little like bon maman or whatever they're called mm -hmm. jellies claire oh, has one. Oh, it's like jam yeah, Claire has one, okay. and she's been showing them off on Instagram. I was thinking so. she has like, Jello. She has a jelly advent calendar. Yeah, it's like the little like jams, like they're in the cute little like. Yeah. You have to make toast every day to use it. Oh, yeah, don't you make toast every day to have breakfast? Like, or you could just like you mix it in your oatmeal. Or you can eat it just plain. I'm, I'm not a big toast. Uh, I don't make that much toast. You, wow. Rob, what you do is you put some jam in your yogurt. Okay. Oh boy. There you oh, go. Why not this again? <laughs> plain yogurt with you the You take best. plain yogurt and yogurt. you make it flavored yogurt with some jam. <laughs> I just thought you were a purist. I thought you were a, you wanted plain. Nah, he's a DIY yeah, he's a flavored Rob, yogurt secret, guy. Secretly, I've moved on. Oh, Whoa. okay. Whoa. No, but that happens news. to me too. Breaking when I used to talk news. about boring chicken and I haven't had that in like six years. But people oh my God, about. Rob, you need to play that breaking news or happening now thing because now we <laughs> all know Taryn has moved on everything. All right, he more on the more. Have... We'll explore that more as the reindeer game season goes along. <laughs> Peeling back layers. Okay. Wow. All right. So uh, Christmas is going to be canceled and we're not talking about what happens when uh, her and Memphis are getting into fist fights. All right. If we do not get the children, uh, their presence from the reindeer games winner. Well, so it turns out reindeer games is just going to be like the final. Yeah. Um, well, all I know is that I think it's so funny to watch them all try and like react to that and, and say like, Oh, we have to help the children. Oh, we really have to help the children. It's like, okay, I don't know. I I, I like how Cody's reaction was like, what is happening right now? Because everyone else was like, we have to help the children, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Good so. acting skills. These are all auditions, really, honestly. Yeah. 
All right. So uh, we get some alliances going on. Do we have an alliance chart yet for reindeer games? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say I've seen one. Um, and also, like, uh, who knows? We know how they edit. They're, they're usually way behind on accurately representing the, the strategic alliances. Mm -hmm. um, these conversations happen all the time. Granted, there's a lot less time to actually strategize, so there's less stuff to not show. Um, so, uh, so this might be somewhat accurate, but yeah, it seems like we have like some, some light groupings. You ha essentially have like the women, uh, kind of agreeing that they're working together. You have Josh pitching, pitching this, like him, Taylor, Xavier, uh, Danielle thing. And then you have like the BB 16 ers, uh, that, that seems to be the, the main groupings. Um, but to me, like the biggest connections seem to be Danielle and Brittany. Uh, yeah. and then, you know, Taylor and her weapon, Xavier. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and Frank, and uh, so yeah, we'll see where all that goes. Yeah. Okay. All right. We get at the doorbell. Okay. Uh, Jordan Lloyd is here. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, was I, like, I, I don't I didn't recognize her there for a second. It took me a second to remember. Yeah. yeah. The reading of that long scroll was just real something <laughs> <laughs> it just like went on forever and it just seemed so hard like it was just like oh boy oh god i felt so bad mm -hmm. yeah so we have three different hosts here that are going to be coming in santa's helpers for reindeer games jordan is the first uh also uh derek x uh aka derek xmas is going to be here as mm -hmm. well also uh tiffany uh from big brother 23 is also going to be there i, I kind of thought that uh they would be all like yeah. hosting as the a show trio, together yeah. but Maybe it seems like play off each other it'd be a lot more fun i think if they were yeah, it's like that maybe like, we're gonna get one person a day. Mm -hmm. They could each read just like a third of the scroll instead of reading the whole <laughs> scroll. It's you like know, a, it was just very long up, and like very deadpan. Class. Yeah. yeah, it was like deadpan. It was like not there wasn't even like inflection when it was just like, and this is when you're going to read the thing. It was like, okay, can we like move past this? I will say if you've decided to make it one of them per episode, this was the worst option of the three and i mean no offense to jordan but i feel like no derek would have brought way more energy to the premiere tiffany would have brought way more energy to the premiere my only wondering is did they do this because those two were on 23 with x but also why does that matter doesn't matter they're hosts. Yeah. they don't have any power here it really felt like they were trying their hardest to make sure you understood that these are not hosts Mm -hmm. um probably because yeah. they didn't pay them the amount of money that a host should receive um <laughs> Julie they, put it jordan was even like i am an elf assistant um <laughs> <laughs> like, i it was it was my dream to be an elf assistant on big brother yeah very uh, assistant to the regional manager oh no yeah uh, i feel like it just it i don't know i i i'd hope they do something more with it like i don't know i just think that her coming out and just reading wasn't it didn't really do much for me, unfortunately, even though I was excited to see her. Um, I just felt like maybe maybe having a bit more energy or something, even when she was announcing Britney as the winner, it was just very like low key. And I, I mean, maybe I'm wondering, like, I, I mean, I don't know if we know how this is going to work yet, but my thought was like, oh, it must be like Jordan does the Monday episodes, like both of them. And then like Tiffany does Tuesdays and then like, Derek does Thursdays or whatever the days are that it airs. And maybe they wanted like Tiffany or Derek for the finale. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But, um, you know, that that's also, uh, I was surprised to not see Julie. I honestly thought Julie was going to be part of this. No, I don't think they are going to pay her rate for reindeer <laughs> games. I, I think that's not. what it comes down to. She's not going to be part of this at all. All right. <laughs> So we get our first game, uh, which is going to be, uh, this is a little bit, uh, Taryn, I feel like this is kind of like a throwback to sort of like the like BB All-Stars uh, type uh, competition of like Spool of Lies, where yeah. we're going to get a bunch of these things and it's going to be the clue to a song up on a housetop. Up yeah, and, housetop. and like for me, like right away, they introduced this competition and my thought was, I'd be terrible at this. 
I have yeah. no idea what these Christmas songs are called. Uh, and I then I thought, away. this is a great feeling. Good job. Like, the, yeah, like this, like I don't, I don't always feel that way about Big Brother comps. Like, uh, and the fact that immediately I'm like, I don't think I could win this competition was like, that's good. That's the, these like other people have a chance to win this competition right away. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, I, I feel exactly the same as you, but like the reverse, which is I always look at competitions and I'm always like, I would be terrible at this. And this is like the one competition that happened where I was like, oh my God, it's up on the housetop, like right away. Exactly. I didn't know that and was a song. Great. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like for Christmas music, I mean, I didn't grow up around Christmas and my most knowledge about it is working overnight shifts in December and just hearing it on a loop. So I might know it if I heard it, but I did not even know it was the name of a Christmas song. Yeah, I, I didn't know actual Christmas said, trivia was going to be part of this. <laughs> yeah, at best I would have said up on the rooftop. Uh, yeah, I would have said that too. I thought it was rooftop wrong. at first, and then I was like, mm, I can't, I don't know whether it's housetop or rooftop. I'm hearing and housetop house. and it still sounds wrong to me. Like it housetop? Sounds, yeah. It does sound wrong, but there was it was a house, so that's why I would probably have gone for a house. But mm -hmm. I thought originally rooftop. Yeah. Okay. So we got a bunch of people guessing. Uh, some bad guesses, also. Yeah. Felice Navidad. <laughs> Felice Navidad was bad. <laughs> um. What What did Xavier guess? He had a bad guess too. Oh. Oh, oh, Grandma got run over by a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, where was that? <laughs> after, where does the grandma come the in? house. Grandma lives here. Obviously, she <laughs> left, got ran over. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not quite. Yeah. Um, and then we get to see Brittany cracking it, but uh, Frankie also ended up uh, getting it uh, as well. I think one other person did, too. Uh, but Brittany wins the first competition. And then... This was the shocker of all shockers. We get to see DJ Scroogey. <laughs> <laughs> this was so wild and it lasted for so long. Like Made all that no for sense. that. And can we talk about this costume? Because this was marshmallow, but yeah, just was. done poorly. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Yeah, um, I feel like I would have been terrified if I was in the house and all of a sudden that cardboard thing comes just like <laughs> boom down and you've got just like smoke coming everywhere. I would think there dance was party, long. slow motion, strobe light, <laughs> Rob. And it lasted so long. Rob, you're a big advocate for this person. Was it a missed opportunity to not have a Bo DJ Why did Bowie they not Jane? Get Bowie Jane. <laughs> She's a DJ. Yeah, what? <laughs> I was waiting for them to unmask. That was so terrifying. <laughs> and and, oh and for us to then get from uh, DJ uh, Scroogey to ask us. How did your game change for, I'm going to say the better, when you joined the mafia with Matt and I? <laughs> oh, my God. What is the DJ Scroogey? It's the top hat for me. <laughs> Why is it, felt like they were going, it felt like they were trying to appeal to like uh, a young like tiktok audience with just a let random, me put like, their their toilet. worries at ease none of that audience is watching this show this is for, <laughs> we are watching this show i also mm -hmm. want to know if it's like how andy Speaking always talks toilet. about zingbot being like piped in like very like, quietly over the speakers like if the music was actually just like just this tin, tingy little like thing over the loudspeakers instead of like actually like boom, boom. <laughs> dance party. Like, yeah, like dance party. Oh boy. That was so random. I like forgot about it. <laughs> that was my favorite part. That was the highlight of the night. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Brittany has to give out a disadvantage and uh and she gets an advantage to somebody. And then we spend a lot of time for Brittany to figure out this decision. Uh, she does know she wants to keep it as giving the disadvantage to one of the big strong guys because it's a it's a Christmas brawl. It's called a brawl, not a bra. Makes sense. I, I loved how mad Brittany was about the the fact that it wasn't safety and that she had to give away a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just like. Because I, I wondered, right? Like, you know, Britney did The Amazing Race, sure. But, you know, The Amazing Race isn't the same show. And Britney in Confessionals in The Amazing Race was good, but she wasn't like Big Brother Britney. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been like, uh, like almost 10 years, uh, almost since 
she was on the show properly. Um, and so like, I was wondering like, you're Brittany Haynes. Like you, you are the legend in the diary room. How much pressure is on you to get in there and deliver gold? Um, but the second she like sat down seemingly, she just instantly was at riding home, a bike uh, and just instantly made it obvious. Like this is why she is the queen of diary room sessions. Like just gold after gold, just like did not miss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Taylor is in the chat. Uh, she told Ooh. us about the experience with <laughs> DJ Scroogey. <laughs> she said the music was loud, but the smoke effects were so loud it drowned out the song. <laughs> so it's just like what, blasting. What I them. love about that is that they were all dancing. <laughs> to yeah, the there were, smoke noise, <laughs> just mm -hmm. dancing to. That's so funny. On a loop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just white noise. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Brittany had to figure out who to give the disadvantage to. Cameron tells her it would be cool to not get the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be pretty chill. Good, good strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh she's a little intimidated by Josh. Uh, she got a lot of air from Xavier. Um, she has a conversation with Frankie Grande. Uh, and she's talking about how uh, you know. There's a lot of people that are there that are winners. Uh, and she's a little confused about one person. Yes, he won the, he won the, he won the, he won the cookout. He won. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany did not know Xavier was the winner. That was so funny. That's so good. He won? Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, my poor Xavier. So maybe Brittany didn't do a ton of research <laughs> before she came on. Less pressure. Just walk yeah. in and vibe out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if I'm Xavier, I'm like, you know, I didn't win. It wasn't a winner. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, you Was the X not giving winner energy until that point? Like, mm. is that one of those things? She's like, oh, okay. I don't think he won because he's not exuding that that energy. Yeah. But Frankie Grande, yeah. you would think that maybe he had other stuff going on, uh, that he's got all the facts. Mm hmm Yeah, he knew about the cookout. Mm -hmm. I thought he wasn't watching the show at he all. He knew Cameron was evicted twice this summer. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, he did host the opening, the the opener of the multi BB multiverse. So he would have True, kept but that doesn't we don't know. We don't know if he watched it. If he could have just like been there, performed and but the wiki left. article is easy to easy to glance. I mean, <laughs> I, to True. my knowledge, uh, to my memory at least, Frankie was a fan before he went on. Um and uh you know I, he also seems to me like somebody that would would do his homework. Uh he's a competitive guy. Like he, you know, mm -hmm. uh not to mention the fact that like, you know, if is if he's talking to anybody, like he's gonna get the scoop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right, Brittany has to decide who to put on the nice list and who to put on the naughty list. And she tells us it's gonna be Cody on the naughty list. And Nicole smile like the Grinch when uh <laughs> he's like, Oh, everybody left. Okay. Smile, huge smile. Uh Cody is getting a disadvantage. Yep. Which I think was smart. I think that was the right call. It's it's interesting because, you know, obviously the easy person to 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 do this to is Cam. Um mm -hmm. and uh and theoretically by putting it on Cam, it, you know, takes away a potential number for Cody if Cody thinks he can scoop Cam up, which clearly he he didn't really feel that way. Um mm -hmm. but but more importantly, it puts Cody on the back foot. Um, which again, like Cody's not really used to being on the back foot. Uh, he started BB 16 in a really, or BB, uh, 22 in a really powerful position. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and started BB 16 in a fairly powerful position as well. Um, and so by starting him in a disadvantaged position, um, and setting the precedent that like, yeah, you can take a shot at this guy. You're not going to fall over dead if you do. Uh, it, it, it does kind of limit his options moving forward which is important considering how many options cody seems to have on this mm -hmm. cast yeah mm -hmm. also Brittany, as far as not targeting cam uh she did say during the puzzle that she was rooting for cam she felt like that he was somebody who didn't have anybody in the house so she was might have been one of the few people who was looking at cam as a person that she could potentially like pick up and work with yeah i mean i think once she didn't 
give Cam the disadvantage, it feels like, well, I've, now I've done him a solid. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, like, it would be great if he stayed. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, Brittany was doing that in her, like, basically, it was sort of like she was the HOH and having, like, her one-on-ones with people. Like, hey, if I don't give you the disadvantage, that's going to mean something moving forward, right? I think she said that to Xavier. Mm -hmm. But that might have been when he was just giving her a whole <laughs> meal of air back. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Jingle Bell Brawl, okay? It's a literal winter wonderland. And then we have to get our letters and then uh, deliver them to the other people, all the letters for Santa. And so we're going to put them in the different mailboxes and you get to stuff the different mailboxes with people. I did wonder how many of these letters were from Riley. <laughs> all of them <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a great competition I feel like it had the elements of a competition that yeah. we ask for where it's like there is some sort of strategic component and the fact that you're trying to eliminate your you know competitors and things like that I feel like that's what we were hoping for, that we would see that kind of strategic competition in this reindeer game show and I'm so glad that we got it because it makes it way more interesting I thought this was a fun comp, too. We got everybody moving uh, back and forth. Uh, unfortunately for Cam, I don't know if this was agreed upon, but once people start like, okay, all right, fresh meat, pile on, give him all the letters, everybody's just <laughs> following suit. And it was like an avalanche for Cam. Like, he couldn't even fit in any more letters into his mailbox. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, especially a comp like that. Like, you know, Frankie had the right idea, too, of just like, let me just put one in everybody's. Uh, if you start targeting one person, they're going to retaliate and target you. And you basically just took both of you out of the competition in one fell swoop. So uh, the options are do what Frankie did or just pile on the same person who has all of the targets to go after uh, and therefore unlikely to, to, to single you out. Um, and so Cam is an easy target there. He hasn't made social connections with anybody at this point. Uh, and Cody is an easy target because he just got given the disadvantage. So he already mm -hmm. has enemies. Um, and so it's not surprising that those two had like a ton of, a ton of letters. the disadvantage being one letter is it's like, that's nothing so funny yeah. to me. Like, yeah. The first 35 minutes of the show were <laughs> yeah. for one yeah. letter. Well, All that drama. Yeah. One yeah. I think there's been a lot of discourse about like, what is the format of the reindeer games? And like, what is it similar to? Like, I know that a lot of people didn't watch this show, but Jenny and I podcast the whole season of buddy games. And basically like, this is kind of buddy games that oh. the, first, the, the first challenge was the curveball which you won that and then you got to sabotage one of the other teams. Mm -hmm. Then there was the buddy game and then you won the buddy game. And sometimes it would be the teams that came in last, but also you could pick. Sometimes I think it was that you got to pick the people that got to go into losers last stand, which is the same thing here really as Santa's showdown. Interesting. Well, I did love that we heard that there's going to be some days where they're competing as a duo some days where they're competing as more some days it's single i like this added element because with all the dynamics we're seeing it's going to mean something even more so i'm curious mm -hmm. to see how we play that out moving forward i mean okay. there's a lot that they can do to play with this format given that um you know there's uh no real set solid thing so like yeah next week you could have the advantage mean a lot more or it could not be an advantage it could be something different um mm -hmm. It could be, uh, hey, you win this comp, you pick the teams for the next thing. Um, and then as a team, you win. And then as a team, you have to agree on who you're putting into the into the showdown. There's, so there's like there's definitely different ways that they could mix this up um, and and make it interesting. So, you know, I'm curious to see if that happens. OK, um, can I ask you all a question? All yes. three of you. Um, you you know you've been surrounded by the christmas world for for many many years what are some other comps we can see here that'll be parodied in because we got we got the letters we got the sweater mm. we got the song how many more things is there going to be like a gingerbread house competition oh 
Oh, like assembling yeah. a gingerbread house. I could yeah. see that. So I think that there's going to be a ton of different things that they could cram into these competitions between just like winter activities, snowball fights and sledding Ooh. and all sorts of other things. And so I just think that they will have like a lot of like their usual comps and be able to reskin them for doing like whatever Christmas things they want. Yeah, it's, it seems like the so far what we've seen is like uh, taking a Big Brother competition and Christmas suffying it. Yeah. <laughs> and then also kind of like twisting it a little bit to be a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it wouldn't yeah. kill anybody to have a Hanukkah challenge in here also in Reindeer yeah. Games. Put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Why like not? Um, like dreidels or something like they have to spin something and then like try and knock the other person's thing off or something. Yeah, find all your candles for the menorah. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. Do you think they're going to have like some sort of like Otev, but instead I, of Otev, it's like Atna. Hotev? Ho, 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 Hotev? Yeah. Atnas or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure we maybe we'll have something that's like Otev adjacent. Yeah. Okay. So also there was kind of a big injury that uh, Cody Calfieri took like a big spill and looked a little bit like a scary fall. I guess Cody is okay. But the highlight of this was Nicole's reaction to Cody falling and getting hurt. She does not play. Yeah. Uh, she's like, <laughs> I was happy to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I love that Nicole's embracing that sort of like yeah I just love it I think it's so fun yeah I, well I kind of feel like that just like the meta commentary on Nicole Franzel was that I feel like that especially around Big Brother 22 I think we used to talk about how like she would act, do things that a villain would do but then act in a way of like hey I'm like I'm not a villain I'm the hero of the story mm -hmm. we're yeah, like here when yeah. she cry, pretended to cry when she like evicted Ian or whatever, yeah. and did like fake tears. But here, I think she's steering a little bit more into being like uh, this like uh, Christmas <laughs> villain who's out for revenge on Cody and Frankie. And we're here for it. Mm -hmm. I am very much here for it. I love that. I love mm -hmm. when people embrace like their villain qualities and then it's like a fun villain in the dr versus like when someone's just doing stuff that is like villainous but then being like oh, i'm the victim it's like no that's so i boring. think that i think that was one of the biggest things that that people held against her which was mm -hmm. you're doing all this stuff but you're acting like you're not doing all this stuff why are you doing that don't i know the truth don't play with me like that so really that's where it goes falls down to which i agree i'm happy to see this um Big Brother, listen, I said this online. Doesn't matter whether it's Reindeer Games and it's six episodes or it's Big Brother 25 to 40 episodes. They love themselves when someone eats shit, <laughs> rewind it, slow mo it, add a boing to it. <laughs> they, like they really remix it. He fell down, then he reversed back up, then he dropped down again. They did a lot of slow mo stuff in this. Uh, they did. Yeah, yeah, like it was like it was very entertaining. They yeah. Did <laughs> well, yeah, which, yeah what was what was the longer slow-mo uh the dj or cody falling oh god <laughs> they're all like right. we need more slow-mo all right so frankie ends up winning the power that he is going to send two people to santa's showdown and uh one of them will be eliminated and so uh we see cody talking to frankie and so they end up having Nicole. How does Cody not know Nicole is annoyed at him? I mean, I, it seems like he has an idea, right? Like, I mean, I think that like, I think he knows she's annoyed, but it's also like, you know, at least I have a connection there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, if he can sort of like keep her from yeah. directly targeting him uh, for as long as possible, then it still benefits him. But Taryn, he said he's played two seasons with her. He mm -hmm. must know her so well that it, he knows in real life they haven't talked in what, four, uh, three, three years since Big Brother mm -hmm. 22. Like if, if you're Cody, don't, doesn't it make some sense to say like, just get rid of Nicole. Like, uh, like I, I, this is going to come back to bite us at some point. Like this is how she plays. 
let's just get rid of, let's cut cut bait with Nicole. He might be looking at it as well, Nicole also has us. Like, who does Nicole have otherwise? You know, that could be the mis- miscalculation that, like, okay, we need each other. This is all we have. We got to go with this and run through that. And I feel like Cody's ha- has his eyes set on a certain other house guest at this point, another winner, perhaps. Yeah. That he did not see, tar- expect to target him. Is it that he should also thinks that maybe he thinks that, like, look, I got Franzel. Yeah, I mean, it's, she's the devil he knows, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, we uh, voted her out twice in BB-16. She yeah. came back to my side in BB-22. Uh, I'll get her back again. Mm-hmm. I mean, familiarity is is huge, I think, on a show like this. Like, he knows what to expect from Nicole. Uh, he doesn't know what to expect from other people, as we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I think, like, having somebody that you can read is usually going to be a little more valuable than somebody who you're not you're not sure what they're capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like Nicole might come for him, but she in the meantime might try to work with him. And even the facade of her working with him can benefit him because it adds to the perception that he has numbers and he has power. Um, and that's good. Plus, if he thinks other people or if he knows about the drama that Nicole has with other people in the house, maybe he's thinking like other people will target her. I don't need to be the one to target her. She has her own enemies. And the fact that he might see her not as much of a physical threat as someone like Xavier or Frankie or whoever. And so he might be like, it's better to keep around people who I who don't really threaten me in that way. And so maybe maybe that's playing a part in Mm-hmm. His choice. I want to talk about Cody telling people in the house that uh, he's very worried Frankie's going to put him into the uh, Santa's showdown here. But yeah, how's anybody buying that? You remember in BB 22 when they had the shrinking mechanism and then Cody said, Where did they all go? <laughs> we went into commercials. I got a flashback here. I, no one's buying this, Rob. There's no shot anyone's buying mm-hmm. this. Y'all are connected. We know this. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Cody's an actor. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Cam was buying it a little bit. Well, yeah. Cam said it's me and you, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, even then, Cody was like, <laughs> I don't think it's me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, ultimately, we're going to get it down to that it will be Cam. And it's going to be... I didn't know who the second person was going to be. Ultimately, it was Xavier. I think it makes Uh, sense that it's Xavier. Um, hmm. In in terms of what he's trying to do, uh, not only did Xavier put a a letter in his box, um, but, uh, but like, Xavier is seemingly, like, the next closest person to being a pariah in the house at the moment. Like, um, you know... Xavier was the person that Brittany was going to give the disadvantage to, according to the edit, until Taylor convinced her otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, that tells me at, at that plus the fact that she didn't even think he was a winner. She really saw <laughs> like she was like Cam number one, Xavier number two in terms of like people who are on the outs uh, and don't have connections in this house. Um, and so I think that like it seems as though the perception of Xavier is that he's just an easy person to throw out there because he doesn't really have many people. And then it's sort of revealed that maybe he has Taylor. Um, but, but even that is not enough to stop the flow of what's happening. There was one other uh, potentially strategically interesting conversation that happens between Taylor and Frankie Grande, where that uh, Frankie Grande is talking about like uh, who to put up. He mentions Xavier Taylor says, well, no, how about how about not Xavier? Um, and then also she's uh, talking about Cody. He's like, well, okay, well, we don't want to target Cody right away. So a little bit of a stalemate there between Frankie Grande and Taylor. Frankie's going to file it away. I thought his DR after that was excellent. Um, just, you know, indicating that he he clocked what was going on. He saw what she was trying to do or basically what she was trying to have him not do. Um, And, you know, he's just keeping that information so that way he knows, you know, who she's working with or who she at least wants to protect. I feel like um, he did a good job uh, with that. I feel like I was surprised that Taylor wanted to wanted to try to get Frankie to target Cody when 
it seems at least from the edit and everything that they would be really close. We knew they were really close in big brother 16. So like the idea of them immediately targeting each other, like just didn't, wouldn't make sense um, from my perspective. But I mean, it's also possible that like, you're not seeing that as much because it did seem like Frankie was trying to like distance himself. And when he did that whole like leap into his arms thing, it was in the bathroom mm -hmm. alone. So, you know, it's possible that they were really trying to give off vibes of like, we're not working together, but, uh, yeah, that was that was tough. All yeah, right. I mean, so what's interesting about this, obviously, this is Big Brother, but without the feeds. Um, right. And so, like, usually when I talk about Survivor, like I talk Big about Brother Canada caveats mm -hmm. all the time, right? Um, to me, it seemed like uh, the way that that Frankie and Taylor were talking to me indicated that they were working together. Um, yeah, that, that there was some kind of agreement between the two of them, and even the way that Frankie then tells Cody about Taylor uh, targeting him. Frankie immediately was like, but not because she's against you. She was just trying to protect X as though he's trying to protect mm -hmm. her. Um, so it, that might have been where some of this came from. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, obviously it's hard to know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, ultimately, you know, gave away a lot of information. Cody now knows that Taylor is after him. Um, I thought it was a very fun DR from Cody because again, we don't usually see this from Cody, at least on Big Brother, of like him just genuinely being shocked um and being like, Taylor, like I like I didn't see that coming. Like I underestimated her. She's good. Um and uh and sort of seeing this sort of brewing war between the two of them is very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Santa's showdown happens. And I did think this was the one part of the episode that started to slow down a little bit as uh, we got two segments of putting the puzzle together. I did think it was a curious choice by Cam. I don't think I've ever done a puzzle and started in the middle. Yeah, he literally said corners first and then proceeded to go with the face in the middle first, which I thought was a wild choice to make, especially looking how weird the face was. I feel like the move was 100% go sleeves and then go up. Yeah. All right. I thought it was a great puzzle. I loved how intricate it was. And I feel like I, I just, it was also like visually, I feel like I was able to like understand like how people were doing, like whether they were doing poorly or not. I feel like a lot of the times yeah. when there's a puzzle, it's like, I can't really follow because it's just, you know, pieces shuffling around. And they're all like the same color. This one was like very clear if they were like on track or not. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. The best part of this whole segment was the commentary from the other house guests that were watching it go down and taking drive by shots. Yeah. And also again, shout out to X for doing the tie and the hair thing on his bald head while Cam was doing mm -hmm. his. I thought that was really good. All right. Well, great. speaking of people catching strays here was Danielle Reyes. Hold on, let's turn the volume on. You guys are doing way better than Caitlyn. <laughs> Why? Why? Poor Caitlyn. Poor Caitlyn. She can never catch a break. She's just going to be associated I with I mean, she's forever. in Big Brother history forever now. The, any puzzle, any fumbling of a puzzle, it's going to be synonymous with her, for good or for bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but it went on so long that you could knit this sweater faster than you <laughs> took to put these puzzles together. <laughs> It so was long. very long. Well, they didn't 57 need pieces? <laughs> I mean, they. I'm glad that they're, they take, it took them a long time, but I don't need to see it all. Yeah. I mean, and you saw like uh, the sweat was dripping off of Xavier. I mean, this is a family show, but this is here's Xavier. I knew you were something bitch. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? <laughs> I don't know. I knew you were something bitch. <laughs> A family show, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it is on 11 o'clock at night, um, yeah. But it's a family show on at 11 yeah. o'clock at night, they were like, oh, get in there, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's relatable, though. It's it doing a puzzle that's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Not quite so what crazy. this made it more Christmassy to me. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you ever have that where you're like wrapping a gift and it's like a it's like a uh, yeah. <laughs> odd shape and uh, it's ripping so Ugh, all the time. All right, U ultimately, and why did it have to be a Yeti sweater? I don't know. <laughs> also, why did they have to compete in their sweaters? Why did the Yeti need <laughs> oh a sweater? Oh my god, yeah. not help with the sweat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, literally a sweater. <laughs> all right. I think um, Brittany's sweater was my favorite. 
Yeah, you it liked had all it. The little like ornaments. Yeah, ornaments and stuff. I think that one was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So ultimately, uh, Cameron he ends up coming in last. They do get to pick a prize on the way out the door. Taryn, do you like that we're getting like a parting gift? It's it's a little strange. I didn't quite understand uh, like the fruitcake of it all um, and why he got a Jelly Club membership. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I, I would have expected like, oh, you get coal or a prize or something along those lines. Uh, it's not like they were sponsored by Jelly, I imagine. Um, so I don't know exactly where it came. I might be missing something. It must be like a Christmassy gift, I assume. Like you, yeah. you get someone jelly. Oh, I mean, fruit I was cake. Told... that poem where Santa's belly shakes like a bowl <laughs> no, of jelly. I don't think that's a, what <laughs> I, I just think that that's like, you know, like when you think of like bad Christmas gifts, fruitcake, I like, I feel like that's probably like more of like a really like old joke of like a very oh, okay. bad Christmas gift is like, oh, you get a fruitcake and that I think that that was like a really like, uh, like hacky, like a uh, comedian joke of like, basically there's like one fruitcake and people just give it, gift it to each other. Yeah, people uh, don't like fruitcake is the joke. Yeah. I'm being told it's a Christmas vacation movie reference. The jelly? No, I think that's it's more than it, it's widely made as a joke. I think fruitcake actually a little underrated. I have uh, kind of like is the cake. jelly. Rob, the, the jelly is the Christmas vacation movie. Joke um, or the no, yeah, I don't the jelly club. I think. I, yeah, I think it's just like also like a like notoriously bad gift for a person is the jelly of the month club. I've never heard that to be a notoriously yeah. bad gift. Like, that's, that's mm -hmm. not Rob, did you I really say of. fruitcake is underrated? Yes, I think fruitcake is okay. underrated. No, yes. I'm so sorry. You're wrong. Fruitcake is bad. I think if you get the right <laughs> fruitcake, it's good. Taryn? Okay, did you I've never had fruitcake. Wait, okay, there's actually <laughs> fruitcake. I had to be told what it was. You're supposed to be like continuously like what, what, what is this in the chat? Cake. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, freaking hell? Wow. <laughs> See, you know why why am I staying up till 12.30 a.m. on a Monday night fruitcake for this? It's supposed to last for years. <laughs> did you know that? I just learned that. Yeah, because if it's like, made right. It keeps you keep it lasting for years. Right. That's somehow, why you like, people gift it from like one person to another. Oh, yeah. my face hurts. It. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. And in Christmas vacation, Clark Griswold got a jelly of the month. Uh, oh my god! Everyone's freaking out in the chat. Yes. They're yes. saying it is Christmas vacation, okay. Rob. All right, but I'm sure people also get that. Besides, it's in Christmas vacation because it's a thing that people probably get at Christmas time. Okay. <laughs> Jelly of the oh Month guys, Club gosh. gets sold zero subscriptions from January to November. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, if anyone that I'm spending Christmas with is listening to this, I'll take a five thousand dollar Christmas present. That's mm -hmm. apparently your thing as well. A fruitcake. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Please no. All right. <laughs> this Reindeer Games cake. episode number one. Okay. All right. Yes. Any predictions on who goes home in episode number two? They did leave us with both, you know, Taylor and Cody talking about going after each other. So I have to imagine we're going to see that result play out. It's going to be one of the two of them. Um, I don't have it in my heart to ever say otherwise. I think Cody is going. I don't think Taylor is going. I could okay. see Cody leaving as well. I think that there's a lot of eyes on him right now. And the fact that he was one all stars and he has these connections in the house. Like I think people, you know, might go for him. So I could see a situation where they want to just take out the, the power players, quote unquote, right away. And I could see Cody going next for sure. What about Xavier? Do you think this was like a one time in Santa's showdown or do you think that like the seal is broken that people will put him back in? I, I feel like it's I feel like it's tough. So I will say first that I think that like uh, maybe I'll go against the grain there. I think that like, you know, the fact that Cody has Frankie, um, the fact that he uh, has other potential connections that weren't really talked about, but like he should have a connection to Josh, I would imagine through the challenge. Um, like, you know, we saw in this episode itself that like, he has connections to, to, to be in a decent position. So, um, I wouldn't surprise me if he has the ability to rebound here, not to mention the fact that he's good at these competitions to begin with. Um, 
And that, but but the thing the thing about it though is that like when it comes to Xavier, this seems really rough for him because mm -hmm. he doesn't have like if the women are working together, whether it's loosely or tight. Uh, like he doesn't really have a great in there it seems other than with Taylor who uh, is using him as a weapon um, <laughs> and uh, and so like he doesn't like have a great path there it would seem um, but then that leaves like the Cody Frankie maybe Josh you know that kind of contingent and they just put him up like that was kind of his in that was like where he needed to go I think and and he didn't seem to get an in there Obviously, Brittany is not super fond of uh, Xavier. So it's it's like, where does he go from here is the question. Uh, I think his best bet is what he talked about in that, like, because he performed so well, like, do you want to come after this guy again? Uh, but the problem is, you know, pawns stay pawns oftentimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you know, Frankie has already pissed off Xavier, then he's a great person to throw in there, especially if you're looking to take somebody else out and leave Xavier back in as a pawn who now has multiple people he could go after, uh, that could be dangerous for him. So he's really going to have to, like, I think, step up his 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 game here and make some connections. So, Taryn, do you think that Frankie can win back-to-back -back Santa's brawls? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. Um, Are you allowed to? Yeah. It feels like you're allowed to. Uh, also, Puya, that really almost sounded like something else. Um, and so, uh, it's, um, <laughs> I uh, <laughs> it's called a brawl, not a bra. Yeah. Yeah. Santa's bras. Um, and, <laughs> back back um, bras. <laughs> it seems like you're allowed to, I mean, they didn't mention that you weren't allowed to. So, uh, I mm -hmm. would be surprised if, uh, if you were, which means like, yeah, I mean, it's very powerful. Um, it, it, the Santa's brawl. Uh, essentially gives you the power of an HOH, but with the, the like ability with no veto power, and you also get to compete again. Like it's very good. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd be I'd be surprised given that they didn't mention it that he's not allowed to compete again. Okay. Anything else about Reindeer Games Night One? I didn't like that Santa called it P plus. P plus. Yeah, yes. P -plus. I didn't like yeah. that either. I also didn't like how Santa was like. Get me cocoa, Mrs. Claus. Yeah. I was like, what yeah. the heck? We need more cocoa. We need more <laughs> cocoa. Okay. Yes. Oh need that God. cocoa caliente. I'm I glad feel Taylor like I've seen. Elves. Like, don't I've, you have elves? I, yeah, I feel like I've seen from like some of the players that like there's some animosity towards Santa. I feel like I feel like Why? there's still some more like bad Santa to come in, mm -hmm. in this series that he's gonna have more Santa, and more of a heel yeah. turn. Hmm. Santa's not a good guy in this show. Yeah. He's the reason he's Christmas overworked. is almost canceled. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's a great guy on this podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Who All right. Santa is good. Okay, well, let's leave it there for us to come back tomorrow <laughs> night. And boy, have we got a show for you tomorrow night. Coming Tuesday to RHAP, I believe it, 90-minute episode of Reindeer Games. I think so. Yeah. Next two nights. What, what does that put us at? That's not starting at, at 1045 p.m. Eastern time. We've got a big one for the holidays. Uh, we are going to be welcoming Ooh. in uh, the uh, Wurtenberger, <laughs> Wurtenberger faction here as <laughs> Zach, Corey, and America join us tomorrow night uh, for what should be a wild recap of Reindeer Games episode two coming up on Tuesday night. So join I us feel like I'm that Julie, that Julie soundbite that's like, ooh, I love it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Aaron had his finger it. on it. He was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be on Tuesday night. Earlier today, our friend uh, Hannah Shapiro joined us for the Survivor Feedback Show. A very fun chat with Hannah about this week's episode of survivor check that out up at rob is a website.com and then we just got back from new orleans puya and i were out there for our big live show in new orleans owen knight hosted us uh very fun panels of survivor players in various states of sobriety joining me to talk about everything that happened from this week's survivor check that out as well 
Then over on Nothing But Netflix, Chappelle and I talked about the Squid Game finale coming up on or that uh, aired this past week. So we talked about all that. Uh, we will have an interview coming up as well on Tuesday. We're going to talk with mother and son, Trey and Leanne, about their Squid Game experience coming up here on Tuesday on RHAP. Of course, you can get everything that we're doing in our patron podcast feed as well. I'll be checking in with Shannon Guffs about this week's episode of Survivor UK and everything else that we have going on in our patron program at robiswebsite.com slash patron. Make sure you subscribe to all of our podcasts for free at robiswebsite.com slash subscribe. All right. Very fun way to kick off the reindeer games season. It's going to be a very fun couple of weeks here. Melissa, what else is going on for you? Just reindeer Wait, when's games. When's these reindeer games roundtable? When's the <laughs> stock watch? Wait, did y'all do a draft without us last week? And um, it was a it was a last minute. As who we did were you draft, Melissa? Tell us. Mm. Um, I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> uh, my first pick was literally Cam. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I mean, that was always going to be a choice. Were you first yeah. pick overall, too? Yes. Oh, my days. All right. <laughs> you, wow. Melissa, do you, will you apologize to Cam for jinxing him I'm in the sorry, draft? Cam, it was all my fault. I always yes. pick people who lose. Yes. Also, I heard some reports that Melissa was bullied on the podcast. Also, <gasps> yeah. What the heck, guys? What happened? Yeah. Come on. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to be me and just say my thoughts. And you know what? Fine. I'm here to eat some humble pie today. Just like I said, BB Reindeer Games was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I, but I didn't know it at the time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, well, you are so overwhelmed nice with the Christmas spirit, Melissa. Okay. Yeah. So, did you have it, a she was, called, pick also? she was called the was, Grinch. She yes. was called Scrooge uh, by the chat. Oh, wow. And, and she it. truly has three sizes. like three gone sizes. through the, the whole story arc. <laughs> yes. Look at me. Look at my whole house. I'm all about Christmas All out. Christmas out. Yes. Who was your second draft pick, Melissa? Uh, Brittany. Okay. All oh, right. Love that. So, You're in there. Yeah. You're in there. So, okay. You know what? I'm still there. I'm still But the there. Reindeer Games draft is not canon. Does not supersede no, the BB25 no. draft. Oh, no. It it's was not just, we were supposed to be doing a, a cast preview, and then we were like, let's just Yeah, draft. that was fun. It was fun. I was listening. So, okay. yeah. All right. I, I I applaud the choice. All right? Okay. Puya, what's coming up for you? Well, people can find me on Twitter at Puyaism, twitch.tv slash Puya. That's where I am when I'm not podcasting. Rob, I've got a lot of catching up to do. Obviously, like you said, I've been away as well this past week in New Orleans. Uh, got 90 day coming up, both the other way and regular. Both are going to be two episodes to talk about each. And I have good guests ready for those. So definitely get excited for that. And Mass Singer, we're going to be trying to catch up with that as well. And I think that is about... Oh, Traders Canada is over now. Okay, Mm -hmm. but we had fun with the exit interviews. Definitely check those out. Uh, There was some uh, the ending was wild on that one. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. Okay, all right. We a great job tonight. Let you uh, change out of that Santa Claus outfit after the show. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. And then finally, Taryn, what else is going on for you? Come hang out and watch these episodes live with me on Twitch. Uh, I watched tonight's live. It was a good time. Uh, I'll be live tomorrow night uh, watching the episode. And then on Wednesday, we'll have Survivor. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Thursday, another episode. It's every night this week. We're going to yeah. have a good time. <laughs> it's so going to be a busy and, uh, week. Okay. Yeah. And I know that uh, Melissa and Puya in the check uh, that they're holiday sweaters got highlight i am wearing my rhap holiday uh oh, okay sweater rob as well here tonight couldn't we really make it out on camera Karen, you wearing you wearing holiday socks taryn mm-hmm. i have zero holiday clothing i need I, I need to buy some for this for this show <laughs> okay <laughs> it's not too late all Look, right he's got a christmas tree zipper that's nice. Very festive. All right. That's Thank nice. you all so much for being here with us for our Reindeer Games premiere coverage. Uh, come back tomorrow night when we have the uh, Wurtenberger special coming up on Tuesday night. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.